Hey guys! So I'm just here with another video about something I want to try. I have no idea if it's going to work or not or if I'm going to even like it to be frank and honest. Um, and this is too big. We could go that way. We're going to try this anyways. Um, <laughs> So there's these sticker storage folders um, from a site called Cute Things from Japan. At least that's a site I know I can order from here. Um, they're by a company called King Jim and they're sticker storage binders, folders, things. They're really cute. I'm very tempted to order them for my sticker storage. I don't really need them, but they're like super cute. And then I thought, I wonder if there's something like with pockets that we could make for one of our Shannon Green custom keepers. This is one I happen to have in the other room. I wasn't using it. And I thought, you know, I wonder I wonder if I could make some kind of clear vinyl pockets that we could put in here to store our stickers. So we're going to give that a try. I've got some, I was going to go out and buy stuff. I'm like, no, no, we need, I want to try this. I want to try it with things I have and things I'm not using, and then if it doesn't work, what's the worst that could happen? I just throw the whole thing away. The pockets, not the custom keeper. Um, so I have 14 um, clear sheet protectors here, and I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some binder clips, a whole bunch of them, and my reading glasses. Okay, and we're gonna try to line these up as best we can. These were literally like shoved in a drawer, so they're all kind of wrinkly. But we're gonna do our best here. They're very slippery. Um, you could probably do this with Ziploc bags. They don't have to be perfect, perfect, but you want them to be kind of close and then put a clip to sort of hold it together. Oh, one's folded, wait. There we go. And then put a clip, put a clip over here. Put a clip over here somewhere. Try to get them all lined up as best as we can. Take a few minutes and try to line them up. We're going to be doing some sewing and cutting so you don't want them to be too off. Okay. All right. So I need to make this into something that's a booklet that I can put in the Custom Keeper, but also something that's obviously smaller, so it'll fit in here. Um, so I want to make something that's about, let's see, mm, five and a half to six inches wide. If I did this right in the middle, This is like six and a half. If I did six, that would work. So I need to have be I need to be six by like nine and a quarter to fit in here. So we're gonna take a sharpie. We use the fine point one, and we're gonna mark six. And six. Use this binder clip over. There we go. And then line up those two marks and draw a line. And that's where we want to sew. But then remember, I said nine and a quarter. These are too tall. So here. Here. We're going to cut that whole top off. So I think first 
what we should do is do the sewing and then cut the top. So let me go to the machine. I'm going to use a sharp needle. It doesn't matter what kind of thread, but lengthen your stitch length because plastic like paper, the more holes you punch in it with your sewing machine, the more fragile it is. So you want to attach them together, but you don't want to use the minimum number of holes possible. Now, I don't have a sewing machine, Gina, what am I going to do? That's okay. You could do this and you could tape everything together. If you have some kind of a hot fix tool, you could melt them all together. Um, look around your art room and see what you have. Um, you could duct tape them all together. I think that would probably work fine. I have a sewing machine, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to go over there. I'll be right back. You saw me sew this with a long stitch, a regular sewing thread. I didn't use anything special. What I did do though is go very slow. This is a lot of plastic for the needle to punch through. I also used my regular sewing machine. I should have probably used the little machine for mixed media, but my regular garment sewing machine has a little bit extra power in the motor to push that needle through all these layers of plastic. I did use a denim needle, so a thicker sewing needle. Um, you, could, you could also sew this by hand if that's what you wanted to do. So now we're going to do some trimming. I want, I took the loose thread ends from this side and I tied them in a knot. I will be probably putting a little bit of glue on the knot. First we want to trim this excess off and also the excess on the top. Um, let's do the side first. And I think we're going to use a straight edge and a box cutter. So move your Teflon mat out of the way if you have one because I haven't, I've done it before where I have forgotten and then you cut through the mat, which is bad. So don't be me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab a straight edge. I love to use for straight edge my quilting rulers. They work like a charm. I'm gonna turn it around this way since I'm right-handed. I want to move this thread out of the way. I don't wanna cut that because I wanna be able to tighten a knot later, okay. So I'm going to just eyeball it and like about a quarter of an inch away from the stitches. I'm going to hold this straight edge down. Again, this is a small quilting ruler from the fabric store. This is a just your ordinary box cutter with a sharp brand new blade in it. There you go. So you can save this for another like project or just throw it away. I'm gonna just toss them out. So that worked. So I'm gonna take these two binder clips off. Again, I'm gonna make sure this thread is out of my way because I wanna be able to tie a knot up there. And we wanna cut along this other line. because we need to shorten these, remember? They're too tall. So I'm gonna get as close to that black line as I can without hitting the stitches. There we go. Take the clips off. 
I'm going to tie this in a knot. Now you could sew it and then tape it to ensure that the stitches stay in. You could do that too. A lot of different things you could do with this. Then trim that. Just to ensure that those knots stay and they don't go anywhere or come unraveled. It doesn't hurt to put a little tiny dab of white glue on them. There you go. Let's put this back. And let's see how that fits. So what did I say it was 14? So I'm going to let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is the middle. And I'll put it in the middle string here. Mm, it's a little bit tall. you probably want to make yours a little bit shorter or just loosen your strings which I'm gonna do let's see I need to sit down hang on so maybe make yours nine inches tall instead of nine and a quarter um, or just loosen your strings um, I don't remember what size custom keeper this is but you probably want to, um, if you have, I'll try to find out for you. I don't actually know. She's got a lot of different sizes and probably what you want to do is you want to measure from the center hole to the edge of the cover and take out a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. And then you want to measure from this hole to this hole. And that's how tall you, you don't want it any taller than that. Mine's a little tall. But also my strings are a little tight. See there, look at that, that's much better. I have a tendency to tie these things kind of tight. She usually gives you plenty of long enough strings. Yeah, look, that's much better. Look at that. So now you have this custom keeper filled with pockets that you can put sticker and ephemera in. And if you have one of her tool keepers, um, you can put the tool keeper in here too so you can have all your pens and things in here. Plus you have the clear plastic pockets for ephemera and stickers. How cool is that? That's pretty dang nifty. I don't know where my tool keeper is right now, but that's pretty nifty. I love it. So there's one idea of something that you can do with your custom keeper, a DIY pocket. You know what? Let me go see if I can find my tool thing. I don't even know where it's at. I just filmed all that and I didn't have the camera on. I'm real swift. <laughs> um, all right, so I guess I don't have a tool holder for this one, this bigger one. I only have it for the littler one. Um, Shannon makes these little inserts that go in your custom keepers um, that hold your paint brushes and things and um, it's a pretty handy like little travel case and I have used that for uh, this for that before that's why this is customized the way it is I added this flap to the inside so that I can slip a little uh, sketchbook here I can put some pens I've got some uh, more pockets here this is actually upside down <laughs> uh, more pockets here for ephemera and stickers and I can just fill this up and sort of just take this with me in my backpack like when I'm traveling and that sort of thing if I want and not to take my whole travel case um, so it works really well. Anyway, she does make these for the bigger size. So how cool would it be to have a custom keeper like this, bigger one, with the vinyl pockets you just made for ephemera or stickers. You've got a tool holder in the back for some pens and markers. You've got a few... Um, I do think she makes something that's vinyl pockets now that you can put on the inside. And you can put that in the front. So you can put a couple sketchbooks maybe in the front. You have these pockets for stickers and ephemera, and then you've got your tool holder in the back for your pens and things. How cool is that? And then 
you have this and you can take it around with you. Um, you can also just use this for sticker storage, um, washi tape storage. Um, I think it's cool and you can just have you know a number of different ones of these on the shelf in your art room and you can hang a little like tag or a charm or something off the end that says you know what kind of stickers are in here so you can just look on the shelf and say okay this one's got word stickers this one's got background stickers this one's got I don't know I have Hobby Lobby stickers like literally anyway that's old school for those of you who don't know what Hobby Lobby uh, Holly Hobby is I have Hobby Holly Hobby stickers um, they're so old. They probably aren't sticky anymore. Anyway, um, so you could have them labeled with what kind of stickers are in them and have them organized um, on your shelf. And you, that way when you're creating, you can just pull one off. They're nice and neat and cl they stay clean. Um, they're organized in your pockets. I think it's a great way to store your stickers um, and other things. Plus it's a great additional addition to your custom keeper if you use it to take it traveling like I do this one. And I may end up making some final pockets for this one. It's a good idea. So anyway, that's one idea. I'm gonna link Shannon's Etsy shop and her Facebook group in the in the video description, along with places where you can find my social media links, my Etsy shop, my Facebook group, my Happy Mail address and all that stuff. So check it out. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have a question, comment or concern, I would love to hear. Um, let's start a discussion about these. What are your favorite ways to customize Shannon Green's Custom Keepers? Let's start a conversation either in my Facebook group or better yet over in hers by Shannon Green. I'd love to hear. I know she probably would too. And uh, yeah. <sighs> Clear vinyl pockets. I may still end up ordering those other things, but this is a really good idea. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.